Welcome back. We're still looking at term limitation for executives that's going by a bill that's passed through the second reading in the House of Representatives. Oscar, before we went on break, we we're talking about service standards as against. Um, we also talked about electoral process mm -hmm. and then performance. this bill, performance and all. Yeah. So let's go back again and look at the Constitution and what it has to say about quality of service and is it punishable if the man in office fails to meet those standards? <laughs> but I, love, I love the way you come at these things. Is it punishable? Who is the person that will punish? Does he meet his own standards? We're talking about the traditional no, way of step step. seen. Let's take it step by step. Yeah. Are the standards there? The yeah, standards are not there. They are just blank. Vague or Vague. Are they clear? No, no. It, the standard assumes that irrespective of your qualification and your experience, you should be able to do this once you've been sworn into office. That's just what it is. It assumes. But that's not where it should start. It should start with number one. If we had strong institutions which we refuse to build, for instance, INEC could even be the one that will see it before you even move in. The first of all, what do you want? This is what you want. But there are code of standards, not just tax clearance. Oh. And and whether your certificate is so mm. well you had it or you don't have it mm. and you that's that, that's all they do the most important thing is number one what's your track record people they must trace you from primary school to know whether when you were there you were still in pencil <coughs> because if you did that you will steal big money when you get to abuja we're that, told, is, that, told, is, that told, is clear these are things done, you investigate we're told tapping is a game okay it's okay you call it you. tapping okay good <laughs> well, i call it stealing <laughs> okay so if your if your character is traced that's one two whatever you're doing whatever you call your profession or your devotion people will see that you have a good track record. In other words, you could end up being a role model for the younger ones. Because the younger ones are looking, then you qualify. Then what exactly do you want? What experience do you have that you can bring? I'll give you one simple example. If you go to Abuja during the elections in America, practically all the legislators were discussing America which means they were watching CNN, which mm -hmm. is beautiful. But I was there. I was on the line with my sister who was going to vote, and I saw something. A man walked up to us and was asking for votes. And what was his qualification? He said, out of the 52,000 firemen in America, he is one of them that worked voluntarily without a pay for 20 years. I said, how many of you were doing that voluntarily? He said, we're up to about 60%. Fireman. Voluntary service, just to be a fireman. Not receiving a dime. He's not receiving a dime. He's called at any time. He goes in there with his uniform to save lives. Today, he wants to go to Congress. That is a qualification. Yes. Then you see another man here who sits down only God knows whatever he's doing and then suddenly okay there's some money in the pocket or some godfather says I think I can trust you you come and go there and then that's it he becomes a miracle governor or he becomes a miracle house of rep man or senator and this is what happens here how can we get service that's where to start the constitution did not envisage that the constitution assumed that oh once you're there you're going to give service it's not true we have seen that it is difficult to give service if you don't have the orientation and do not forget this same constitution structured us for consumption not production otherwise we will be a proper federal country we're not it's a unitary government the any man in abuja is an emperor the governors are kings in the states and they control everything. Every member of the house, in the House of Assembly, you find them in the governor's pocket. That's what happens. And it's the fault of this constitution that we did not give to ourselves. So should we be looking at other aspects of our constitution and be looking to amend the parts which will strengthen our democracy? No, jettison the constitution. Amend. 
when there are too many patches on, <laughs> on an old cloth, you discard it. No longer. You discard the cloth. You discard the cloth. Throw it away. Throw it away. So Throw it away. You, you, what you're saying, therefore, is not not amend. Not amend. But have a new constitution. Have, Absolutely. Have completely new constitution that will restructure the fundamentals of Nigeria. How do we go about that? We we can go about that by telling ourselves the truth. Yeah. In 2014 there was national conference. Mm -hmm. Where is the result? Before the 2014 conference there were about nine other conferences. Where are the results? You now find out that most of those conferences were just there to serve the dictates of the man in power, to serve the interest of the man in power, and to serve the interest of those who find themselves in power. Without any any notch at sincerity, without any notch at really moving Nigeria to a better level. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, how can we in this day and age be practicing a constitution which throws in everything in the hand of one man called a governor of a state, including the funds of the local government. And they say it's a state local government joint account. And each time there is an effort to detach that account, the effort is shut down by the governors. Because that is a cesspool for them to dip their hand in the cookie jar and spend money without accountability. How can this day and age a governor is retiring after four years in office? And the pecks of office that go with his exit continue. Will continue. It's like more than his salary. Is, 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 is more than, is more than uh, what so many people could have made working for 35 years. And and we feel it's normal. The governor is leaving office after four years and he goes with 200 or 300 million. And every four or five years, you give him five different cars. After, you know, there's another man or woman who has put in 30, 35 years. Civil servants are crying, federal civil servants are crying that federal government has cut down their salaries. And they said they were not paying enough tax. It was an issue two, three days ago. And it's still an issue going forward. A man, a woman serves 30, 35 years and he leaves office and there's no gratuity. The pension doesn't come. A governor who is supposed to ensure that the pension and gratuity comes leaves office and he's going with 500 million. Despite the ones he has surreptitiously kept for himself. Stolen. If you use the word stolen, they will be angry. Tapping. They, they tapped. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What would be the role of the National Assembly in this scenario? Oh, the God. role of the National Assembly is to listen to the yearnings of the people. But like uh, my brother said, would they even comprehend what we're saying when a lot of them are deficient academically? Deficient. In 1999, I knew for sure so many ex 419ers that went to National Assembly. The then chairman of the Senate Committee on National Security, one retired DIG from the North, he said he wanted to name names. They threatened him and he dropped down his papers on the floor of the Senate. But the Senate was infested with 419ers.